Christy Smythe is ready to tell her full story, and she joins us now. I just want to welcome you because I know watching, you know, your story played out the way it just was, it can't be easy. Um, you've been almost silent, especially in the world of television, um, since the beginning of this. Why do you want to talk now? Well, I suppose to kind of fill in some of the gaps um, that have uh, you, the L article I think was excellent and it, it did a really great job of um, kind of laying out some of the situation, but I think a lot of people misread some of it. Um, people interpreted things in their own way. Yeah. I think everyone's been sitting at home watching too much true crime documentaries and so on. And a lot of people wanted to see me as a victim. And I don't think that's what the writer of the article intended at all. And that certainly isn't what I'm, I am, like I'm trying to show. And um, so I think by, by speaking a little bit and kind of giving some of a flavor of my personality, uh, I, hopefully people can kind of uh, come away with a little bit more of a, of, of a clearer understanding. Well, let's start with, because I want to pick up what I found was so shocking. I read the article when it came out and, and you, I thought, did a great job explaining your journey and this relationship. What had my jaw fall to the ground was his response to it. You know, Martin Screlly then says he wishes you the best through an attorney. You are professing life partnership. He is sending out a statement from his attorney that said he's wishing you the best. That doesn't sound like he's reciprocating the love or the affection. Are you, are you together? What's the status here? That's a complicated question. Um, because of the uh, horror show of the pandemic in our prisons over the past year, trying to maintain any kind of relationship with somebody on the inside is difficult, stressful, fraught, um, anxiety-ridden. Um, I could, I've, over the past year, I haven't even been able to see him. Um, I can't even communicate with him now because the prison took away his email, I think because of his um, interactions with the public and the press. Um, so what's the status? I don't know. Giant question mark. Well, okay, but the giant um, question mark, though, is that statement. When he said he wishes you the best, would you have preferred him to say, oh, and I love her, too? I, yeah, I, I would have, but I also knew what I was getting into. Um, Martin didn't want me to go public. Um, he was in a situation where... Um, he doesn't have any control in the prison. It's it's terrifying also because you're sitting there like a sitting duck waiting for this this virus to come get you, essentially. So, you know, it was a, a fraught thing for him, um, for me to kind of bring up this personal relationship in such a dramatic fashion. And and later on, he told me, because he's continued to talk to me okay. after this. Okay. I mean, we he called me three days after the story was published. Um, he told me he was, uh, it, it hurt him to see it exposed to so much ridicule. Mm -hmm. Um, and also I've heard from his friends, um, telling me that he was concerned that me, um, doing this, like right. making this big statement. So like what this, is he going to think of you being on today? Me, hurt my career. What is he going to think about what, you? Be, what will he think of you being on live with me today to answer some of these questions? I don't know. You'll have to find out. Well, I mean, I, mean, I should point one out. One of the reasons, yeah. We, we did reach out to his attorneys to try to verify the relationship. Um, and we've had no verification from Martin about the relationship. And we did reach out to him via his attorney. He declined our comment. Um, and as we know that the infamous response to it, I guess I just, what I would like to know, because so much is at stake here for you. I know that you were a journalist who was respected. Your name matters to you as a woman in this industry, trying to get your stories um, covered and, and picked up by these major publications. Does he, has he ever said to you, I love you and I, you sacrifice for us and you sacrifice your career? And we're in this together because he comes off as a very selfish human being, jacking up a drug price from $13 to $750 a pill that could cost people their lives. He then is accused and convicted of swindling many others out of millions of dollars. He seems on paper to be a crummy guy and then not to respond to your affection and you putting your heart out there for people to judge you and not having your back. How do you describe him? Well, I think 
as a reporter and also in my personal life, I've always been a little bit more interested in what's behind the headlines than what's in the headline. We always have to remember, as journalists, um, there are people pulling the strings, there are people behind the scenes doing things. The, the story you see isn't all there is to the story. That's never true. Um, and in Martin's case, Martin has such a toxic relationship with the press that I, I pretty much assume anything written about him is at least scornful or um, done so with uh, the, the, the emphasis on the most negative thing people can find. About two years into covering Martin Screlly, you ended up traveling with him to Princeton University where he was giving a talk. Um, that's not uncommon because you're following his story. What happened on that trip, though? What happened, which I want to make clear, uh, Martin didn't get paid for any of these college visits he did. He was going to some colleges. He was requested by some students um, to come and talk. Uh, at Princeton, there was a student investment club that, that asked for him to come. Um, and I accompanied him. Uh, and it was, it was an interesting experience. He, um, he kind of just gave a spiel about his life. Um, it was engaging and funny and uh, self-deprecating even. And um, and afterward, we spoke to all of uh, these students or some of the students who could come meet us at a bar. And it was uh, a lot of um, young entrepreneurial types, a lot of, um, you know, first generation immigrants, um, these people who were like hungry for success and were really smart and really motivated. And I saw how he connected with these people. And I thought, there is something way more to this guy than all of these, these nasty things in the headlines. Like people, people feel kind of in, weirdly inspired by him. And, and when you a say way people, do you mean I you? Were you being, that. were you finding yourself um, in that spot where you were being inspired by him and, and lured in? Because it sounds like he was putting on a heavy charm factor and you were falling for it as well, in addition to those people that were meeting with him. I mean, I'm not going to lie and say I'm not charmed by intelligence. I absolutely think people who are brilliant um, can be pretty, pretty fascinating, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm into right. that. Um, but you know, I wasn't really. I mean, I wasn't falling for some kind of manipulation. I was falling for this charisma that he displayed. And but what you I were falling. I guess what I'm getting at is positive. whatever you want to call it. You were falling for him. You, you were now being. He may not have purposefully tried to seduce you, but you are now being pulled in. I don't know if I'd characterize it like that. Then how I would you? Clicked. Tell me what it is. We clicked on a very deep level. I think we both kind of felt like, you know, this is, this is the place we like to be. You know, we like to be uh, talking to these young students. We like to be talking about ideas and about um, business prospects and about stuff people could do to change the world and try to make the world a better place. Were you place? having it's, emotional thought, feelings you know, for him? You, 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 were, you were, as you said, falling. So now you're feeling romantic about him at that point? I felt like we kind of had a little bit of a, we definitely had a chemistry for sure. Absolutely. S sexual chemistry? I, you know, I wasn't thinking that way at the time. I was, I was trying to do a job at at the same time as I was also kind of exploring these kinds of emotions cropping up. So in my professional life, if I have feelings, you know, I kind of like say, okay, and I put them on a shelf and I go about my business. Um, but yeah, there was definitely a chemistry there for sure. We, we like talking to each other. We like spending time with each had other. Had you ever had this happen before? Had, had this happened before while covering someone that you suddenly found yourself attracted to them? Or was this the first time? Not like this, no. Not this like is the this. only time. It's the only time. So you were, were, were you married at the time still? I was married. Unfortunately, I mean, I don't want to speak ill of my ex-husband. You know, he's a private person. Sure. Um, I wish him the best. But unfortunately, it wasn't a very happy marriage. Um, we, we just, our personalities clashed. Um, you know, he kind of became jealous of the Martin situation and, and um, why would he we, become jealous of the situation? We, uh, did he? Did he? Did well, your was, husband pick up on something? Yeah, go ahead. I don't think he was. I, I think he was 
no. I, I, I mean, I was in denial, and I think he was in denial. But I was working on this book, and it was pretty absorbing. And um, I think that that was, you know, the attention factor was kind of a problem. I wasn't devoting as much attention to to him and, and the marriage as I probably should have. And um, over time, I mean, I didn't leave. I definitely did not leave my husband for Martin. That is an absolutely incorrect statement. I mean, those two things did happen, you know, at the same time. Certainly Martin, it, it helped accelerate the end of the marriage, I no doubt. Did you but become, at the end of the day, I wasn't happy. You got a driver's license. You'd never driven before. And you got a driver's license so that you could go drive and see him because the prison bus that carries families was no longer available. So you are in this, no pun intended, for the right. long haul. You are in it. Yeah, I, I, I actually, I did used to drive. I'm from the Midwest, but when I moved to um, the, when I moved to New York, I stopped. I was getting panic attacks. I hadn't driven for ten years, and I, I had to in order to see Martin after he uh, was moved to a prison in Pennsylvania. And uh, I took lessons. Yeah. Um, I, you know, got my New York license. Gotcha. Um, and yeah, it's weird. People think of this as like a sacrifice, but I felt like I was getting my freedom back. Let me, I, I understand I that. No Let longer, me ask you though, you yeah. mentioned panic attacks. Have you gone to therapy to kind of unpack this relationship and deal with the possibility that when he gets out, you may not be the person standing out there or that he wants standing out there with open arms to greet him? That is probably something I should unpack and deal with. Absolutely. Um, I, I still kind of firmly believe that that's true. Uh, but we'll see. You know, you're right. You have to be ready for um, disappointment and hurt. Um, but I don't want to live in fear of rejection. You know, I think that you have to embrace um, what life gives you. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what has happened through the course of this relationship and this journey is I've discovered so much more about myself. Um, I've discovered more about myself as a writer and as a journalist and um, just as a woman. Um, I think the, the major lesson I've kind of learned from all of this is I don't think anybody should ever let anyone else write the narrative of, of, of your life. Like you get to write the narrative of your life. You are the author, you are the editor of what goes in that book. And, um, you know, of course, there are, are various interests to consider, family, work, employment, kids, whatever. But, but you should get to decide what you want. And no one should take that choice away from you.